Hi everybody, Logan Gulliff here, and I'm going to be making a really amazing dish for you for Matt Apron. This dish is a nice, rustic chickpea ragu, and uh, let's go over our mise en place and our steps real quick, and then we'll start cooking. So right here I have my chickpeas. These are going to be the source of protein, really delicious. Um, then I have my mirepoix, which is just a diced um, celery, carrot, and onion. Really amazing. Then I have my olive oil my can of tomatoes, my vermouth, my um, red pepper flake, herbs de Provence, salt and pepper of course, garlic, and then I also have my diced fennel and I have my Swiss chard for later. So um, this is just an amazing vegan vegetarian dish and uh, let's get started. So we're going to take um, two tablespoons right here of uh, olive oil, pour that right into my pan, get that really nice and going. And then we're going to take our garlic, which I have here, one clove, diced up, really nice, boom, done. Now we can clean this out, and now we're just going to give this a stir. And we're going to give this garlic some time alone in the pan to, you know, caramelize up, really kind of create like a nice kind of garlic olive oil kind of feel. And also, you know, um, it's one of the kind of a key step in Italian cooking is to make sure that you let your garlic and your mirepoix um, cook first. Of course, mirepoix is French, not Italian, but hey, you know, flavors are amazing, so gotta use it. So, just gonna give that a little bit longer. Um, and let's see what else. Probably added my mirepoix now. So I'm gonna add in some of my mirepoix. I'm not gonna add in all of it, I'm gonna leave a little bit for later. And that's because I want um, some difference in texture. So I'm going to save some, and um, that texture difference is going to be really amazing later down the line because we're going to be cooking this dish for, you know, about 30 minutes or, you know, you can cook it for longer. Um, and as it cooks, you know, these vegetables are going to kind of turn down. They're going to turn into, you know, the bones of your flavor and, and eventually kind of disintegrate. So that's why, you know, we're going to save some for later so that we can have some nice toothsome vegetables for um, when we get closer to serving. So we're going to give this a little bit more time. I'm going to actually turn on my heat a little bit. And you can start to see the garlic's turning a nice little brownish color. Everything's looking really good, nice, nice, nice. That's kind of what we're looking for. So we're just going to give that another little bit of time just to kind of, you know, marry together and kind of turn into one delicious base for our meal. So there we go. Oh, look at that starting to hear that sizzling, that bubbling, and that caramelization that's happening to these um, vegetables. Now we're going to actually add in our chickpeas right now. This is one can of chickpeas going right in. Boom. Oh. Now why am I adding the chickpeas right now? Well, I'm adding the chickpeas because I want them to get a little bit of texture before we start adding in our tomato, our vermouth, and um, our seasonings. Because I want them to get a little bit of that pan seared, you know, goodness that our other vegetables are getting. So I'm just gonna give them a little bit more time in here. And show them the love. Boom. Mmm. It's going good. And you can start to see that nice just layer of oil and just beautiful color on these vegetables. Looking looks pretty good. Then you can cook them for a little bit longer. Or, you know, if you're like me and you're kind of in a little bit of a rush here, we're going to add in our, um, and give it a minute, and then we're going to add in our, our liquids. Um, going to kind of let that sound, that sizzle, kind of, you know, occur before we add in our next ingredient. So. We're going to add in our tomatoes. This is just one can of, uh, you know, chopped tomatoes. Really nice. Boom. Tomatoes are in. And now we can give them a nice stir. And this is where our ragu is really going to start taking our form. And it's going to start to, you know, get to a nice simmer. Okay, give that a nice stir. Next we can continue adding in our ingredients. We're going to add in our um, red pepper flake. And it might seem like a lot, but it's really not that much because this red pepper flake is going to cook down and it's going to really provide some nice warm notes to our own thing. 
Then we're gonna add some herbs to Provence here. Um, you could also use some Italian herbs too if you wanted. You know, your Italian herb mix would be fine. But I happen to prefer the herbs to Provence. Then we're also gonna add our salt and pepper. Very important, critical. You know, can't have a dish without salt and pepper. And then next we're gonna add in our vermouth. Um, this is really where a lot of your flavorful development is coming from because the vermouth just has such a unique flavor. It's gonna add so much to our dish here. Just give that a stir. And uh, now we just let it cook. Give it a minute. We're not gonna add in our fennel just yet because the fennel um, has a tendency to break down. Um, so I'm not gonna add that yet. Gonna save the mirepoix and gonna save our Swiss chard leaves and our little bit of oil for finishing. Well, more like a lot of oil um, for finishing later. So now we just kinda give it a stir. Let it cook, and uh, I'll be back with the next steps. Hi guys, welcome back. So it's cooking up a storm, and it's time to add in our extra ingredients that we didn't add. So here we have our fennel, which we're gonna add in, and then we have our um, extra mirepoix, which we're gonna add in. Um, this is again for just that amazing texture, and that staggered of the cooking, you know. It's one of the secrets to getting some nice, variety of texture within a bite is to, um, you know, cook them at different times. And then we're going to add in our finishing olive oil. This should be about three tablespoons. You know, you could go a bit more if you wanted. Um, once again, this dish loves olive oil. And if you're going to be cooking it for, you know, closer to, you know, longer, an hour, two hours, three hours, then of course you don't want to add in some more olive oil. Now we're going to add in our um, Swiss chard, which I have right here. chard. I love it. And this is going to add in, um, you might think it's going to be a little bitter because, you know, Swiss chard does have that tendency. But it's not going to be too bad because it's going to stew in and it's going to release some really amazing flavor and some more dimension to our dish, once again, because it's going to add in that leafiness and that green flavor that, you know, the mere paw doesn't quite have. So we're just going to take our two leaves here and we're just going to kind of chop them up into these nice rustic kind of ribbons here. Um, you don't really need to be too precise or, you know, care too much because it is going to cook down pretty quick and pretty well. So once again, you know, you're just going to try to, you know, take a nice rustic approach to it. That's kind of the whole approach for this whole dish. Just let it cook for as long as you have um, time for and just, you know, give it that nice love and that attention and that, you know, that feeling of, you know, oh, I'm cooking. Oh, this is fun. Oh, look. And then we're just going to chop up some of the some of the stalk for that beautiful color and we're just going to take the whole thing add it right in and then we're going to add in a little bit more just a little bit of the scraps here and then we're going to give it a stir and let it cook down really nice and um you know it's going to take some more time to cook down the swiss chard but it'll be worth it and um the flavor and the development of flavor that you're getting with this is uh, really going to be worth it. So, um, there we go. Done with this step. Then we're going to cook it for, you know, about another 10, 20 minutes. Or, you know, you get stretched it out to another three hours if you had time. Um, that's the beautiful thing about these rustic Italian dishes. And this one in particular that's vegetarian, vegan, is, you know, you can cook it for as long as you have time for it. Give it as much development as uh, you can. Or, or, you know, you can just cut it short at 30, 30 minutes and have dinner. Anyway, um, I'll show you when it's done, and I'll catch you guys then. Alright guys, welcome back. Now our Swiss chard has reduced down really well. You can see it's looking beautiful. And it's just about ready to serve. Now you can serve it right now and that'd be fine. You know, all the flavors and textures are all nicely developed and stuff. But you could let it cook on. I mean, you could let this dish cook for, you know, a couple hours. And really develop that flavor and just add some more water and olive oil and... A little bit more mere paw whenever you felt like it was getting too mushy. So, um, but it's done right about now. So I'm just going to take a nice spoonful, make sure to get um, a nice amount of just the little little details. You know, you want each spoonful to kind of be unique. So you make sure to grab like some of the chickpeas and then some of the uh, fennel and then some of the mere paw and then you're going to want some of the juice, which is really delicious. And then. You just kind of want to make sure that, you know, you get each little bit of flavor out of these uh, vegetables and in this dish. So let's add, let's top it off with a nice spoonful of chickpeas. And 
Kaboom kabam. Now, um, you could serve this with some nice bread, which I have right here. I uh, just have some nice, you know, baguette with, you know, some toasted uh, cheese and herbs and stuff. And uh, there's your really awesome, you know, vegan dish. But, uh, you know, really delicious. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to let it keep cooking on. And that's one of the great things about it is, you know, you can cook it for 30 minutes, you can cook it for three hours, and you're still going to get a delicious dish each time. So I hope you enjoyed. It's got a lot of protein, lots of vegetables, and it's really all about the layering of the flavor and the textures and um, all that stuff that's really going to make this dish outstanding. So um, enjoy and check out my box of Matic. I'll catch you guys on the flip side.